business as a driver for more revenues uh, and as big as driving uh, revenues to, to calling it a gold rush. So why is that happening? Why are they saying it's the next gold rush in terms of technology? It's purely because what it can help you do, what APIs can help you do. They can really accelerate that journey uh, to profits, to profitability, and to being up and running in record time. IDC predicts that the size of the IoT market will reach a whopping $7.1 trillion by 2020. And we need to understand that the IoT market is not going to work on its own. It's got a lot of different connections to too many different things for it to work successfully. And one of those connections is how will devices, how will we measure what IoT devices are doing? How will we measure uh, inputs and all that data that's coming in from the IoT devices? And how will the IoT devices, as, as an example, talk to the cloud? And it's through APIs. And that industry, 7 point trillion is a huge staggering number. It's a huge, huge, it's a big number uh, of dollars that's going to be driven uh, just, by, just by this economy. So if you're trying to recalibrate your business, if you're trying to think of new business ideas and where you should be heading in the next few years, so maybe this is something that you should uh, consider uh, looking into, which is IoT. Uh, just today, uh, we had some uh, uh, updates within the news, and uh, some of the biggest, biggest technology companies are now running with an initiative of an open API uh, economy. Uh, and they're basically supporting, everybody's now getting on the bandwagon to support open APIs. Because, purely because uh, people like IBM and Microsoft and Google and everybody else have realized that they cannot work in containers, they cannot work in their own silos, but they've got to find a way to, to, to communicate, uh, collaborate, and to share the information so that other people can connect to their code and other people can connect to their devices. And that's why this is becoming very significant. So if you, when you go back home or at your next work day, try and do some uh, Google News search for APIs and see what comes up in the news. You'll find a lot of interesting articles. And uh, this is news from today, all of these three, three things. Uh, with the Open API Initiative, the Linux Foundation and its partners, which including IBM, plan to make the next generation of, P of APIs easier to find, use, document, and transform. And the point is, there's no other option. You cannot hide your technology and connections because nobody will be able to connect to your solutions and you're going to die a very slow death. Uh, the industry is moving towards being more open and more transparent and you need to be able to connect to, to other solutions and services. So, just a little bit uh, background on uh, IoT specifically. Uh, why do we need uh, APIs to work with an IoT? It's a very small example. The Fitbit API might allow a sports drink vendor to send promotions to an athlete. And Fitbit is the, is the device that measures uh, and monitors your movements and it tracks your health activity every day. Or a connected car has an app that can unlock the doors. So anything within the IoT space that's connected to something, that sends back data, and that data can be used for a number of different things. And that's the beauty of APIs because they help connect different blocks together. So IoT in general is very API driven. And if you do not have APIs, your device will not work with anything and you will really not be able to grow that business at all. So it's a choice we have to make and embrace. APIs have evolved since the 1960s. They're nothing new. And uh, there were different methods and technologies that, that kind of worked between the inter basic interoperability since the 1960s. But now there's uh, services such as RESTful uh, and other cloud orchestration technologies that help exchange this information really very efficiently. And we had a session earlier today talking about uh, how APIs are significant and why the, why the new economy is API driven. And it's because, truly because we've, we've taken that evolution and, and route to progression where now APIs are very easier to use. So uh, it's, it's something that everybody's doing. There's different models. Uh, if you're in the technology development cycle, if you're a programmer, you will realize that there's different models of APIs. Uh, for example, where a developer pays for to use an API or uh, where a developer gets paid uh, to use an API. And without getting too deep into how the coding practices 
have originated and what they are now. Uh, but let's just kind of focus on the fact that there's different ways of AP, how AP, APIs can be used. And it depends on the vendor, it depends on uh, what kind of a model have they built with their API so that is it easier for a developer to use it? Is it, and it's not only about being easy or difficult, but how will that API get used uh, in, in an actual practice? So APIs are also a huge and significant uh, factor for the traditional chief information officer or the CIO or the C-suite. And for CIOs who are making the decisions to invest in technologies, who are uh, kind of at the vanguard of uh, uh, enabling new technologies for their organizations, for enterprises, it's really very important for them to consider what APIs can do for them. Uh, APIs can help them increase profitability, create new business models, and create closer, more productive interactions with customers and partners. And I'll show you a few examples in a few minutes uh, with uh, top seven examples, which is the topic of, of my presentation as well, is how can we use APIs to do what? What can we do with APIs? Uh, so the CIO is a, is a very uh, influential person within the IT buying cycle, within an IT organization. Uh, so we've got to consider the fact that whatever affects the CIO has to be very important. And this is something that CIOs are talking about uh, and working on right now. So, Seven ways how APIs drive cloud and IoT dollars. I'm going to talk about seven points. The first point that I want to talk about is ubiquitous customer experience. This is what an API can help us deliver. If you're talking about different uh, vendors who are, whose solutions are talking to each other, that leads to a, to a really good customer experience. Because at the end of the day, what the customer leaves with is what they will bring back to you. So if a customer has a really great experience or a really great user experience, it, it really enhances the quality of your service. Uh, and for those of us who are, who are using the Facebooks, the Twitters, and we're seeing all those things kind of interact with each other, you tweet somewhere, it, it comes up in a Facebook post, you post something on Facebook, it's coming up in, in your Twitter feed, that's what user experience is about. It's about making things easier and smoother. But we can take this into, into, a, into a different area as well, where a customer looking for a new jacket expects a similar branded shopping experience, whether online or in store. And it really matters that if you are buying a certain jacket, how is your experience online in buying it, or apparel, or a car? It could be many different things. So to make that experience good is, is something that APIs are addressing. Um, so we have to take this into context. APIs are not, not standing at the door, but APIs are powering the systems uh, that, are, that are enabling this e-commerce in that, in that smooth way. So creating those unique customer experiences is very important because at the end of the day, what the customer perception is matters a lot for every company and every organization. Point number two that I wanted to talk about is nurturing digital innovation. Uh, we can't say no to innovation because if we stop innovating, we stop growing. And in order to kind of create and foster that environment of developing new solutions uh, and nurturing that, that new API-driven cloud economy, it's important that we work with partners, third-party vendors, developers, and so on, so that they're able to generate that new set of solutions that they're working on. You probably know that at this moment in time, the smaller companies, companies of a smaller size, are being more innovative than the big guys. And, and we're, we're seeing a lot of this happen. We're, we're in the middle of Silicon Valley. A lot of, majority of smaller companies are the ones that are being acquired because they've developed something that's, that's crucial, that's new, that's uh, cutting edge. And that's how they're being nurtured uh, into developing those solutions. If we cut back, all APIs and tell them, no, you can't connect to any of my services, innovation will stop. So we've got to keep that in perspective. So data coming out of every device, every system solution is becoming a very important and critical thing for us to be able to make business decisions. And no matter what system you're touching, whether it's SaaS, whether it's IoT, 
one dominant force out of all of it is data. So we're collecting a lot of data. And so what are, are we doing with that data? What are we deriving out of that data? And the one thing that we're deriving out of that data is actionable insights, whether it's business intelligence, whether it's predictive modeling of something, data is powering our business decisions. And if we stop generating data, we know very little about our customers. We will know very little what affects my customers, what are their buying patterns, how are they buying, how are they making their decisions. And it's a key component that APIs are affecting the way we are generating data and the way we are interacting with data. And correlating external data from multiple sources by integrating with partners and vendors, building more intelligent view of customers to offer more relevant, tailored, and unique products and services. And that's at the core of innovation. It's at the core of being able to develop a solution, which is giving and, and building unique products and services. Let's talk about a next generation delivery model. The next generation delivery model talks about doing things in a way that has never been de done before. And you're talking delivery at multiple levels. You're talking about a product delivery to a customer. You're talking about internal product delivery to internal stakeholders. Uh, or product delivery that's connecting to, to other vendors and, and partners and so on. Because of APIs, because of purely the way we're developing solutions, that delivery model has changed. That delivery model is more agile. That delivery model is now much more faster. And now partners, uh, internal, external stakeholders, are getting that information much more faster. Just because we've cut back on so much time that we would spend on traditional development methods. And that's what this is all about. It's about being able to innovate again and create that new delivery model for everything that can enhance things. A lot of companies are using APIs to share content. And some of them, we're very familiar with them, Netflix, Amazon, and eBay as an example, who are huge in terms of uh, electronic commerce, uh, consumer uh, level interactions, product solutions, and the, the traffic to these websites and the data coming out of these websites is tremendous. And all of them are using APIs to expose their solution level offerings to other websites, other customers. You might have seen uh, a completely different website, not eBay, but that has a feed from eBay about eBay products. And as soon as you click on the product, it takes you to a dedicated portal or even eBay in many cases. Or you can pull products from Amazon and have them on your website displayed in a certain way. So essentially using that feed. And that's what APIs are able to offer us, that we're able to take data from one website, integrate it into another. And essentially the content sharing aspect of APIs is what's powering a lot of the commerce within these websites as well. Uh, so these three companies, Netflix, Amazon, and eBay as an example, use APIs to share freemium content and commercial offers within third-party applications that drive commercial transactions and subscription growth. So within, within the recurring, uh, within, the, within the subscription economy or the recurring revenue economy, subscriptions uh, are, are very important. They're key to building your business. Uh, and the cross-pollination and the cross-fertilization of, of solutions and products using APIs is key in being able to reach that customer base through a different uh, website, a different solution method. And that's how we're sharing content through APIs. Uh, without APIs, you would have to rebuild the code, uh, have a you know, huge development cycle, and essentially you're eliminating that using something that's ready-made uh, and saving a ton load of time. And maintaining the user experience that the customer would have. Point number six is driving usage. Driving usage. Two examples that I have here are Twitter and Facebook because these two companies are using APIs in an amazing manner uh, to increase the number of users who are actually interacting with their solutions. Both these companies drive much of the usage that makes their platforms valuable in the first place by expanding engagement beyond their primary user interfaces. It's very common to see a like button for 
a web post on a completely different website, but it's got a like for a Facebook. So you can click on it and it automatically goes into your Facebook that this user liked that article. Or you can share things on Twitter from a, from a completely different website and you do not need to go on Twitter anymore, right? And this is made possible by APIs. You're able to do this. You're able to do, uh, create these experiences on different websites, different properties, but essentially using the API interface that Twitter has provided or that Facebook has provided. So essentially what, what these companies are doing is create those experiences by, by driving that usage uh, and encouraging their customers and subscribers to use more Twitter, no matter what website you want. So you can go on every news website and use that Twitter button to like that news. And it's key in building the business that they're in. And again, as the slide says, we have third-party web, mobile, and social applications. And there's a plethora of developers that are, that are using APIs to expose data, to connect websites, and to increase uh, usage. Last but not least, uh, do complementary applications. Uh, Salesforce, as an example, is, is one example that comes to my mind. Uh, that provides connectivity to, uh, that exposes an API so that you can connect to it from different places, uh, you can connect to it from SAP and so on and so forth. So at the enterprise level, at the business level as well, it's key in, uh, in connecting uh, not only just in the consumer space but in the business space as well. And all these seven things really, they, they drive more business, they're driving, driving more engagement, um, they're driving usage, uh, and this is what technology companies uh, and vendors are looking to do, uh, you know, give more better experiences to end users. Just a quick word about our solution. Uh, I work with Solgenia. We have a business, uh, a cloud monetization platform that does a few different things and it can be customized to serve the needs of SaaS, uh, PaaS, and in infrastructure as a service providers. Uh, to enable a seamless experience when, when offering uh, you know, cloud services. And we have an open API. We have an API that's proprietary to us and we help connect to other systems to kind of enable that extra mode where other companies and other vendors want to connect their solutions to ours and do something extra above and beyond. Very quickly, Power is built on a patented cloud technology that we've developed uh, over many, many years. And it's essentially based on a high performance computing uh, methodology. And uh, it manages the configuration, provisioning, metering, monitoring of cloud services and solutions uh, on the cloud. I talked about this in one of my older sessions. I won't take too long, but we're, we're now moving from the cloud, we move to a developed uh, cloud monetization. And then IoT, we're talking about IoT monetization. And we're talking about monetization of everything. And with APIs, you really can connect everything. And this is what, what, this is what APIs do. APIs connect everything uh, so that you can monetize whichever aspect of technology you want to monetize. This is a quick slide about what Power does. So essentially, it helps you provision and automate the process of delivery and configuration of software and services. It will help you meter the usage uh, in, in terms of real-time consumption of hardware resources, software resources, services, and it'll help you create an invoice based on the consumption of those services. So in case Power is, let's say it powers a SaaS solution and a third party wants to connect to it using our API, they can do that. And they could take that information and build some other unique experience out of it for their customers or optimize their business in a certain way. Uh, unlock value maybe by analyzing, you know, feeding it to a business intelligence system or feeding it into some other kind of a system that does something else. Uh, we work with uh, all the major vendors, so we're, we're agnostic of uh, cloud technologies. We sit on top of the hypervisors, the orchestrators, and we're, we're a monetization and management layer on top of that, a really kind of squeezing value uh, in addition uh, to everything else that you do. So the Power API is connecting the needs of, of the industry, the innovation, to, to solutions that are being produced out there that are, are in either of these buckets. 
So you're talking about wearables, devices, industrial devices, sensors, you're talking about SaaS platforms, you're talking about a lot of different things. And with our API, you're able to connect that to maybe consumer IoT as an example, or uh, industrial IoT. The applications are so tremendous. It's impossible for me to kind of say that this is, this is everything we do. A lot of times people come up to, to me and say, so what do you guys do? That's the toughest question you can ask me because I have no idea how you would take that information because I could be positioning myself in so many different ways based on the problems that your business is facing. Uh, so we've, we've got to be able to, uh, you know, kind of, kind of simplify the answer to that. Uh, but essentially, we, we help other people unlock value out of the cloud, if, if that's one sentence I can just, just mention. We're based out of Toronto, uh, been serving the industry since the last 20 odd uh, plus years. Uh, we're about 200 people worldwide, this number has grown. And we have our own data center that operates in Europe as well. So we know the, the, the lay of the land and we know how customers, we know the pain behind the customers, what they're facing. Uh, we're really excited, excited to be part of the new technology growth within, uh, within the industry and, uh, and really kind of helping other companies derive value from cloud and, and, and enable cloud services uh, through our solutions. Uh, just a set of our customers and what they do. And uh, we've served uh, quite different industries, telecom, healthcare, business services, manufacturing, retail, energy, and we continue to grow our customer list uh, as we go on. And that's really the end of my, my session. I wanted to keep it short and sweet and uh, not take too much of your time. I really appreciate it. I know it's the end of the day, day three. So it's, uh, it's been wonderful being here for the last three days and I've had so many different experiences and conversations. Uh, it's definitely a lot of catch up to do with, uh, with the number of people. If you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch with me if you like. Uh, my email is there, my phone number is there, or you can find me on the agenda of the speakers or I can give you my business card. But thank you very much for your time again. Uh, if there are any questions, I'm, I'm happy to answer them. But if not, yeah, please go ahead, sir. Yeah, you had uh, Accenture as your customer. What do you do for Accenture? So with Accenture, we're, we're actually a business partner more than, more, than, more than a customer. We do a lot of integration services with them. Uh, they've got their fingers in a lot of different places, so we've, we've done a few projects with them in the past. Yeah. Um, same with Microsoft. No, Microsoft is actually a customer of ours. Yes, so they use one of our uh, they use our business productivity uh, suite. Uh, they've been a customer for many many years, and they've kind of since then uh, grown tremendously in technology. But they they're still using our solution uh, just to kind of tower their in-house business productivity. Uh, and it's a it's a unified communication suite that they use internally. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, please. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, cross border monetization. Okay. And how much are you familiar with that? Uh, I am not cross border, especially. Sure. And state cross border in the country like USA here. So what are we referring to when we talk about cross border? Uh, what what happens is if you are monetizing something from across the border. Yep whatever jurisdiction it is, then, you know, we, what, is, what are the uh, legality issues of monetizing, let's assume I'm monetizing from Canada, yep. you know, another country in Europe, from there, you know, whatever IOTs and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great question, but I think it's more of a legal question.